Welcome to the Tissue Box Podcast. I'm your host, Pam Jordan. Hello, what's up, guys? Welcome to the Tissue Box Podcast, another episode. We're so happy that you've tuned in. I am your host, Pam Jordan, and my special guest here today is Miss Carolyn Mobley, mentor, counselor, and entrepreneur. So happy to have you here today as our guest. How are you? Thank you. Thank you for having me, and I'm fine. Are you I'm doing? Fine. You look fine. Well, you, you look you, well. You. It's a pleasure to be here with you. It's I'm so happy you're here. Yes. I'm actually honored that you're here with me today. Yeah. And I am too, actually. So we're going to talk about, first of all, is there anything about you that a lot of people don't know? Well, like what you do f- for fun. Maybe like a, yeah, yeah. I caught you in your fun moment yes, one time. You did. Yes, so, you did. Yeah. The very first time we met. <laughs> yes. A lot of people don't know about me is um, I own a Fruity Pop business. You do? Yes, 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 yes. Mobley's Fruity Pop. And that pop is like a freeze pop. It's about 12 inches long, and it's made with fresh mango, fresh strawberries, fresh lemon, fresh lime. Yes, $2.75. Yes, that's what people don't know about me. And that makes you happy. That makes me ecstatic. Okay. Okay. Well, it's all about happiness on this show. It's the tissue box. Uh, We've got tissue here just in case you need it. Mm -hmm. Right. But uh, it's it's all about changing trauma's narrative. Mm -hmm. So what we want to talk about with you today is your trauma. Uh, I know all of us have trauma. Some of us have multiple traumas. Right. So in your instance okay let's talk about your trauma what what part of your trauma would you like to share today well I if I'm going to share it I have to start from the beginning okay do that girl we have time my mom and dad (laughs) um separated when I was about seven years old as I recollect about seven okay so you did come from a two-parent household yes I did I did and they separated and my before the court my mom took us and she just left. And she was dealing with her own mental issues. Mm. Um, I look back now and I can see that. Uh, she resulted to drugs because a lot of things happened to her. Um, you just can't teach what you don't know as mm. I look back now. Yes, ma'am. Um, so my experience uh, with my mom at that time, it was six of us, three girls and three boys. And there were times when my mom didn't have her drug money and I'll never forget um, whenever this guy came to the house and she didn't have the money, and she whispered to him, I don't have the money, but I have three girls. Take your pick. What? Yes, and my heart dropped. How old were you? Seven years old. Seven. So how old were your siblings, your sisters? My oldest sister, I was seven, she was 11, and my other sister was six years old. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. What did that do to you? Oh, my God. Just hearing it alone, uh, I I was shocked, hurt. I was scared. You know, that's my mom. You have Jesus, then you have your mom. My biggest protector failed me at that moment. Um, So just hearing it, and then when these people attempted to molest us or rape us, that's a whole nother situation. Wait, wait, what? Yes, that actually happened. That actually happened to me. It happened. I'm sorry. Just just give me a moment to 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 take all of this in. And you're you're how old? I'm seven. Seven at the time. So this began to happen to you at the age of seven. That is correct. Did you know what was going on? Did you understand what was going on? Absolutely not. What what were you thinking when this was happening? There are no thoughts. There are no thoughts at all. And it happened on more than one occasion. Yes, in the care of my mom. So once this got back to my dad, then, of course, he started pushing the courts to get custody of all of us. Mm -hmm. And that did happen. Okay. That did happen. And that was the big, that was a big moment for me and my siblings, being out of the hands of my mom. Um, And, of course, as we tried our best to go through school and that kind of stuff, so still it's a burden on you. It's in your heart. It's in your mind. It's over you. And you just think, 
One is your mom. Now this black cloud is over my life at seven years old. You don't know how to figure things out. You just don't. So how was school for you then at seven, knowing that you've been through this traumatizing experience? You know, your your mom failed you, and then you had to go through this vicious assault. Right. And you're seven. Right. How how was your 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 elementary school, your middle school, your high school? How it did it you- was difficult. Um, it was difficult. When my mom and my dad were married, my dad had an affair with my mom's sister. On top of all of that. Sweet Jesus. Yes. So not only did the neighborhood knew what was going on with us, they knew about the that affair. So people would always whisper and there was bullying and that kind of stuff. So it was a difficult time. It was a difficult time. Okay, so when you were going through all of this, right, mm-hmm. were you lashing out? Of course I was. Of course you yes, were. Yes, 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 yes. You're angry and you don't know why. You hadn't put all the pieces mm, together just yet. Right. You're just angry. Um, so if I'm reading in, in class and someone laugh, oh, that was that was something for me because I get to beat them up. But I'm not wow. I'm not beating them beating up. Beating them up over You're, the laugh. Right. I'm beating them up because that trigger. Something <sighs> triggered me. And not, not understand I'm seven. Now I'm a senior. Okay, now I'm grown. This mm. didn't go away. None of it went away until did, did it okay, it didn't go away. Did it get did it progress? Did it get worse the the older you got? Well, being out of that situation, it got worse worse mentally with me. Mm. It got worse mentally with me because I didn't know how to deal with it. And considering the fact during that time it's your mom, so you're made to be quiet. My mom's brother molested me. Oh, we were living, they were living with us. Um, so it's your uncle. Nobody don't want you to talk about that. So it is, it's the, it's the worst get, kept secret. How did you get brave enough? Brave enough? How? What did it for you to make you talk about it? Because I understand what you're saying, because we we all come from families where it's hush hush. You know, there's certain things you don't talk about. How did you get brave? Where did you get the strength? I was married. Mr. Mobley is a minister, um, and we dealt with a lot of youth at our church. And a lot of youth would talk to me about what had happened to them. And the best way to help these people is to now tell your truth. Right. It's to now tell your truth. I didn't want them to look at me as the first lady. You know, people think these people are invincible. They have no hurt, no shame, no nothing. And I needed to live in my truth. Um, and as I was speaking to these little girls or little boys about molestation, about rape, the, the biggest thing that I can see in their eyes is I could relate to them. Mm. I was talking about my truth. I wasn't reading a book. I wasn't being a Dr. Phil. I was talking to them about my own truth. That's what really that I needed to help these people. And my story could help them. So it was the transparency. It's the transparency. That's absolutely right. And I, I, I truly believe when you're authentic, people know that. Yes. They, they can understand that yes. and they can relate to that. Yes. Um, yes, absolutely. But even when I was married, you would think the perfect life. You're married to a minister, your first lady. Oh, your life is going very, very good. But when I didn't face it before I started to mentor uh, the youth at my church, when I didn't face it, my marriage was rocky because me not facing my own reality. Well, let me ask you this. Did your husband know? Did you share that with him he before didn't. you guys he, got married? No, I, I didn't. I didn't. Wow. And I don't know why I didn't. Um, he made it safe for me to talk about it, but I didn't take the chance. I, I wow. didn't know how he was going to view me now, you know, um, but the Lord it was that fear. It, it was, was fear. fear. Oh, God, it was the fear. Um, I was the first. And he had to, you know, you when you're married to a minister, they, they want that wife, that first lady type material wife. Mm -hmm. And I didn't think that he would view me as first lady material, having 
been raped and molested. So I, I, I kept it to myself. The biggest secret finally came out. And all because if my husband would shut the door wrong, it would irritate me. Oh. If he would smack his so chicken, he, he, here wrong, comes the anger. Here comes the it, anger. It, it, it's, it had it's nothing to do head. with that man eating the chicken, slamming the door. It had everything to do with me not living in my truth. Wow! It happened to you, Carolyn Mobley. Face the truth. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. So it's almost like. God was forcing you Correct. into talking. He, he made it uncomfortable. To, to, yes, right, very right. much so. He made it uncomfortable. And and I was angry with God a little while uh, because all of this stuff happened to me. And the, the abuse, the molestation, and my mom abused me. I got married and had six miscarriages. I I had six miscarriages and two little girls passed away. And I have no children. So I was big mad at God. What in the world are you doing? God, are you kidding? What in the world? At this time, I didn't know I was the Carolyn Mobley. I was going through all of that. So I was forced to deal with this stuff. I was forced to deal with my anger, my inner pain, my inner shame. Wow. That's, that's so deep. And how did you deal with it? Talking about it. Talking about it when the Lord opened up an avenue at church for me to now mentor these youths. Don't nobody want to hear nothing about if you, hey, how does a Pepsi taste? You can't say nothing about a Pepsi if you never drunk one. I was equipped to talk about a Pepsi, Mountain Dew, Swipe, <laughs> Sweet Tea, you name it. I was yes. equipped, but I didn't know what God was doing with me at the time. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. So when I started to talk and mentor these young girls and boys, as well, that were molested. And my story mm. emerged. They were able to see now that I'm talking to someone who understand the first thing. And it's okay to talk about And it's okay. And it's okay. Wow. That's amazing. Hmm. That's amazing. And look at you now. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And going through it. I'll never forget this this prophet at the church. She said to me, she said, sweetheart, one day your name is going to be in lights. You're going to be on TV. You're going to be with God. He's going to use your voice. Now, a biscuit doesn't look like a biscuit at the end. <laughs> you know, it, it looks like mud. It looks like something gushy and gooey. It doesn't look like that. And in my mind, I was molested. I was raped. My mom didn't want me. She treated me so terribly bad. The six miscarriages, my girls passed away. How in the world God is going to take all of that and make something great, lady? I mean, mm. TV, really? What? Me? So, yeah. So, is your mom still around? How is your relationship with my your mom My mom has now? passed away. She mm -hmm. passed away in 2012. Did you ever get any resolved with that, with, with that situation? Excellent question. Yes, I did. I was living in Florida at the time, and, and she was sick. She mm -hmm. was sick. Um, and my two sisters were, were here in South Carolina taking care of her. So it was my turn. I never looked at this lady as a mom. I'll die in this world not knowing how mother love is. And, I, and wow. it's okay because she never loved me like that. Um, so whenever she was sick, I came here to assist my sisters in her care. Um, so I was like, hey, mom, I, we need to talk about something. We need to talk about some things. And she looked at me, and she said, I was waiting for this moment. She did. She said, um, when I conceived you, your dad is not Mr. It is. Wait. Yes. What? Yes. She, she revealed to me then that my biological dad, I thought, was not it. She said, whenever I conceived you, she said, I didn't want my truth to come out. And having you meant my truth was going to come out. She said, I did everything to abort you. Mm. She said, but you, you wouldn't die. She said, everything, I drunk bleach, ammonia, you name it, you, would, you wouldn't die. Okay, well, what are you doing in this moment when your mom <laughs> just, is, 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 yes. is just spewing out this information and, to you and, and you're and like in shock. Yes, what, yes. More what is your so reaction? Is, I'm just looking at her. What, what in the world? And she said, yes, I never wanted you. So her last effort to try, she's telling me the story, 
um, she did something crazy, fought someone thinking that was going, and sure enough, it sent her into labor. I was one pound. I was born in MUSC Hospital here in South Carolina, one pound. And my mom left the hospital and left me there. She thought, mm, that's it. You know, she's going to die. But my grandmother came. And I think she brought me home when I was a few pounds, like maybe five or something like that. So here's my mom telling me the story. And then, you know, you go through the... And I used to wonder, where this thing came up with me not being good enough? Mm. So that was it. That that was that was that piece of puzzle that was missing. Wow. My mom never wanted me. So I went through this, I'm not good enough for Larry. I'm not good enough for Kim. I'm not good enough for this guy. Because when you don't have that connection with your mom, you, 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 you're left to feel unwanted, unloved. So that was real big. So she continued to tell the story. And I told her, um, I had the contract to do TV, radio in Charlotte. Let's talk with Carolyn Mobley. And I said, Mom, you know I'm going to tell my truth. I'm going to share my story. Because a lot of kids, they're going to need it. A lot of women, they're going to need this thing. And I have exactly what they need. And I'm going to tell it. And she said, I would rather be dead than alive. Because so many pieces of the truth were going to go, come out in this thing. Um, my mom, when she was younger, she was molested. Okay, here we go. By her mother's husband. My mom ended up having a child for her own mother's husband. So this lady really couldn't do a whole lot for her six children because she was mentally ill. Generational curses. That's exactly right. And I was determined to break that curse. It was then when I realized this lady didn't have absolutely nothing <laughs> to give us. She had absolutely she didn't know. nothing. Hurt people, just truly hurt people. She yeah. had no clue. She she didn't know. She and she didn't realize what she doing. Absolutely. What she was doing and was wrong. Because she, what was she going to judge it right. against Abs- or base it right. against? And that was my first moment of forgiveness. Because this time I'm grown and she's telling me the story, and it was in that moment when I felt sorry. The hate went to now. I feel sorry. I felt so sorry for her. Wow. Because she didn't get something. She did not get it. And my grandmother was a wonderful grandmother. I don't know what happened, but I knew then my mom was pitiful. That was pathetic. She was just downright pitiful. She could not. She did her best. She did her best. And then she was forced not to talk about it. And my brother, he's, he's living right this same guy right now. He's about 44 years old. And yeah. So how is your relationship with your siblings right now at this at this point through through all of that? In the great beginning when I did my TV and radio shows, they were very angry because they why are you saying this about my mom? She never starved us, she never whipped us, she never she didn't do it to you. Mm. When you're getting candy and pretty dresses and bowls, you don't remember nothing bad. You remember the good stuff. I didn't get the candy. I didn't get the bowls. I didn't get that. I got whippings. Because she didn't want you. She didn't want me. You're absolutely right. So my meals were what my sisters didn't eat. I remember as a little girl, she bought everything in twos. She bought two Easter dresses. Like, I never exist. Yes. Yes. That had to crush you. Oh, did it ever? Yes. Yes, it did. But look at my closet now. Hmm. Wow. Yes. What um, a transformation. That's exactly right. My my baby sister's here in Florence. When I moved back from Charlotte, my um, elder sister, she passed away. Um, a brother has passed away. Uh, one sister and two brothers has passed away. Um, so they understood my assignment. Mm. They understood that. They know in the beginning they were angry because they thought I was revealing information to hurt my family. But and it was actually to heal It was you. actually to heal me. I needed that. I needed that. I, it was like I was underwater drowning every single day. I needed a way to get out of this thing. And the Lord said, you have to tell it. Don't worry about the guilt, shame, or whoever you think you're hurt. They may think that you're hurting. You need to tell it. You know how many people are waiting on you, Carolyn Mobley? And the more I tell it, the better off I am. Mm, 
My eyes begin in the water. I'm going to need a tissue. <laughs> <laughs> this is a tissue box. It, Feel free. <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, we're changing trauma's narrative. And um, um, what, I, what I really want to do for this show is exactly what you're doing right now. Um, having people feel comfortable enough to talk about their trauma so they can heal. Right. Because we know what happens when you hold all of that inside. Yes. You know, your childhood, um, the way you grew up. If you hold on to that. Yes. It's going to create so much anger. Mm -hmm. It's toxic. It's toxic. It's a cancer. So much anger. And the longer you hold on to yes. it, the worse you become right. to everyone around you. To everyone around you. And that is a fact because I was angry with the world. I was angry. Angry in my relationships. Angry in my marriage. Yes, it led to a divorce. Mm. Led to a divorce because I refused at that time, you know, not to talk about what was the real issue. So it was after the divorce it was mm-hmm. after the divorce mm-hmm. that you were able to realize what you were holding on to. Sure, sure. And being able to share. Absolutely. It started freeing up just a little bit when I mentored the kids at church. Mm-hmm. But I really dealt with it when I signed my contract to do TV and radio because I talked about it. I talked about it some more. And I answered the hard questions. And I talked about it some more. And I talked about it some more. And it and that empowered was, you. It empowered me and it gave me the energy and the encouragement to go on. Mm. Yes, 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 yes. People always ask me, you know, which, what, how, what was your greatest teacher? Myself, just hearing this thing over and over because I told it and I told it and I told it. I told it to everybody that would, 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 that would listen because it was something to change that person's life and the next person's life and the next person's life. And if I had any tips or encouragement to any boy or girl, free yourself. You free got yourself. to tell this story because you'll walk around angry at your husband, at your children, at your wives, at your coworker, because you, you fail to deal with your internal trauma. And that internal trauma... It, it just leads to just it results in chaotic relationships. Absolutely. With everybody. You don't know how to express yourself. Correct. You don't know how to listen. That's a fact. You don't know how to love. Absolutely. And it's where are you now? Are you are you able to love? <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. Yes. And it feels so good. Yes. I don't feel not wanted at all. At all. My relationships are great. Well, you know, for the most part, um, I'm not at fault so far as holding guilt and shame. We were have, we're having, if there's an issue, it's a regular issue. It's not because I fail to deal mm-hmm. with something. But you got to be willing. That's the key. Oh, you got to be willing yes. to admit, yes. I have a problem. That's and most right. people don't want to admit to that because they're living in the fear. Right. They're afraid to look at themselves right. in the mirror. Right. And they're uh, afraid to deal with what they see. Absolutely. Even though it's causing you uh, turmoil. Correct. E- even though it's causing you anger. And everybody around you. And yes. everybody around you. <laughs> yes. You still don't want to face it. And the greater the title, the harder it is to face if you are a CEO and has been molested, oh, God, no, hush, uh, don't even mention it. If you're a doctor, a lawyer, a psychologist, any, any titles, it's harder for you to open up and say, here's my hurt. Here's my hurt. That's, oh, that's so, that's so deep because... All I know, it all I know is love. Mm, you know, yes. all I know how to do is love. Right. And so when you when you come across people who find that challenging, they don't know how. Right. You know, it's just like I don't understand. How do you not? But then you think about the trauma, and you and you say you really need to take a look. At yourself. Right. You you really need to find out what's going on. Why are you so angry? Right. That's exactly but, right. But it's not going to change until you That's make right. the decision. Right. I can sit here and say all day, right. you need to do this. Right. You should do this. Let me suggest this. But until you're ready to deal with it, 
that's who you are and that's who you're going to be. And that's exactly right. I'll never forget this guy. I, I won't call his name because he's an actor now. And every night he would just go home and beat his wife. And this is his story you know, Mm -hmm. to me. And he would just beat this lady and beat this lady and beat this lady. And I said to him, what has happened in your life so bad that you had to go home and beat this lady? And he said, his dad beat him every single day. And that's all he knew. That's all he knew. If his, his wife would cook whatever meal, his favorite meal, she would just get beat for that. He would rake the yard or did the laundry or put up whatever, did everything the best that he knew as a child. His dad still find fault in that. So as opposed to talking about it, Mm. he just acted out. And see, when you don't, when you don't have that very foundation where you're, you're, you're nurtured, you're, you're loved, it's okay to make a mistake. I still love you. Right. Let's talk. If you're not raised in that kind of environment, it's very difficult for you to communicate. It's very difficult for you to say, uh, express how you feel. You just, you, you, you basically just give out the only thing that you've ever gotten. Sure. And that's exactly right. Back to my mom. That's all she knew. That's all she knew. Could, could you imagine living in the house with your mom and your stepdad is raping you every night. This is my mom's story. She said this actually happened to her, you know, and she couldn't talk about it. And that was her biggest reason of for beating me Mm -hmm. because I had something that she didn't have. She said, she said, you had the strength that I didn't have and I hated you for it. She said, why couldn't I tell? Why couldn't I say something Mm, to someone? That's good. She said, so every time I beat you, you would just bounce back. Every time I starved you, you would just bounce back. I can never break you. This is this lady's words to me. She said, I hated that in you because I wanted that same strength. All you had to do was seek it. Yes, 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 yes. But back in her day, my mom would have been 70 now. Who wants to say, oh, I got pregnant from my mom's boyfriend? No one wants to say that in her mind. Right. So the devil have to use this tool against you, and yeah. that's all he has. You understand? You're a judge, and who you're going to tell somebody you, you were molested? And how much ju- They don't want to know. Don't the devil wants that, to yeah. yes, embed that in your head. So it's hush, hush, hush. And you counsel people, and you you mentor yes i do yes on a regular yes and you're so you're seeing in your line of work you're seeing some of the same stuff yes happening yes so how do you counsel these people how do you mentor them what do you tell them my story and how i allowed myself allowed myself allowed myself to be free Mm. by talking about it talking about you have to confront yourself one it did happen yeah, yeah, and it's okay. Uh, it's okay. This happened to me. You know, this happened to me. Get your tissue box and let's sit down and confront this devil in your life. Because I, until you do, you're gonna, you're not gonna have a the life that God has designed for you to have. That's right. You're not gonna have it. You're missing out on. You're so missing much. out. He has so Absolutely. much in store yes. for you. I would. I would have never become the Carolyn Mobley that you know me to be right now Mm -hmm. had I didn't confront those demons. Yes, I was molested. Yes, my mom didn't want me. Yes, she tried to abort me. It's the truth, but I'm dealing with it. And you're here. And I'm here. And you're successful. Very much so. Do I wake up and it's poof? No, it'll never leave you. But you manage it. You You manage it. You deal with the hurt. Yeah, oh God, yes. Yes, very much so. And I'm over 50 years old, and I still deal with the hurt. But it's not enough to cripple me like it used to. Mm. It's manageable. Yes, I manage it. And you're smiling. Yes, yes, absolutely. You're a survivor. Yes, yes, ma'am. And I would not rewrite nothing. I would go through the exact same blueprint because it makes me who I am today. Wow. Yes. 
Well, you're in, you're an inspiration to me. Um, Thank you. Um, you know, we we all, like I said, uh, started off the show. With, we all have traumas. You know, in in our culture, it's you know we talked about this earlier too about how we're not taught to talk about things. Right. You know. Right. Um, everything is is hush hush. You keep it all in. Um, and I'm sharing because I didn't realize I, my older brother passed away when I was just 16 mm. years old. It was a traumatic accident that happened. I'm 16 years old. I'm left being the oldest now. I have two sisters and a younger brother up under me. And all I get from my family is... You're the oldest mm -hmm. now. You got a lot of responsibility on you. You have to be strong mm -hmm. for your siblings. You have to be strong for your parents, you know? And I didn't realize until later on, you know, mistake after mistake, trying to figure out where, where, where are you, P? Mm -hmm. what, where are you? You know, what are you doing, right? Um, it's then when I started asking myself those questions, why are you doing some of the things that you're doing? Why you're making mistake after mistake after mistake? Why are you doing that? And it, it, I finally light bulb went off. Mm -hmm. I never, I never had a chance to grieve my brother. Absolutely. I never did because every time I wanted to, I had to suck it up mm -hmm. and be strong because all I heard this on replay in my brain saying, you got to be strong. Yeah. You know, you got to be strong for your parents. You got to be strong for your siblings. So every time I wanted to, I just I had to suck it up, mm -hmm. you know, and I internalized all of that mm -hmm. and it just Anger and confusion. Mm-hmm. That's I, a bad combination. Yeah, but then we knew nothing about counseling. Right. You know, it's here it is again in our culture. You just deal with it. Mm -hmm. Death is a part of life. Mm -hmm. We deal with it and we keep going, you know. But truly, I believe our whole entire family should have had counseling yeah, during absolutely. that time. Yes. You know, Um so that's just me. I'm just sharing part of my story. Uh, I know this is this is this is your story, but I, you just you know, I just felt like I needed to to share that. It's just another example of how we internalize things and we don't even realize that we're doing it. Oh, right, right, right. You know, right. And we alienate alienate the people around us. You know, because we're angry because we haven't let out these emotions. We haven't talked about them. We haven't dealt with them. Correct. So, you know, we're just carrying on this trauma. And so I'm I like, we've got to start talking about this. We've we got to start. start making it normal. Right. To talk about. Sure. Our trauma. We have. That's to the only it, way we're going to heal. That's exactly right. Normal to talk about it. Normal to grieve. Normal to cry. I no longer tell mothers who lost their kids or have a miscarriage or what, whatever the situation is. Those words do not come out of my mouth. Oh, be strong. Mm. You do, what are you telling this mom to be strong? And that's what was always told to me. But And see, that's the thing. That's what we're told. It's just like, are you kidding me? I don't want to be strong right now. Yeah. And, and the Bible said, be strong in me. That's what Jesus, be strong in him. Right. He never said, be strong in the No, he said, be strong in him. So cry, please, Miss Tisha Box. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> deal with this stuff. Yeah. I yeah. deal with it. I, I, I never forget the death of my last daughter, Michaela. My baby sister and I were having a baby at the same time. And whenever the word got back to my family that my child had died, my sister said to me, and I never forget, she said, I never got a chance to shop for my baby. You know, I'm about to have my baby. Can I have your baby's clothes? And I just looked at her. Wow. And I said, sure, why not? Sure, why not? But I, unlike Abra, my oldest daughter, I didn't want to be strong. I did not 
want to not cry. I did not know. I allowed myself to be normal, mm. and I grieved, and I cried, and I still cry. And one would have been 20, and one would have been 21, and it's just like yesterday to me, right. all over again. So I don't like the word, oh, be strong. So hope you guys have been enjoying the conversation thus far, but we've got plenty more to come. Stay tuned for part two.